A viral video of 30-year-old Jordan Neely being choked to death on a New York City subway has led to protests and outrage. U.S. Marine veteran Daniel Penny surrendered on Friday and was charged with second-degree manslaughter. If convicted, he faces up to 15 years in prison. And joining us now, attorney and author Ebony K. Williams and ABC News contributor attorney Brian Buckmeyer. Thanks to the both of you for being here. Thank you, both. Ebony, let's start with you. Uh, Daniel Penny charged with second-degree manslaughter, not murder. Why not murder in this case? DeMarco, a lot of people, including the family of, uh, you know, Mr. Neely, wanted to see murder, uh, understandably so. But it's very important that prosecutors do not what we call overcharge, right, and bring a charge that they will end up having proof problems with later on in the case. We saw this, in my legal opinion, in the case of Trayvon Martin's um, killer, George Zimmerman, who was charged with second-degree murder. The prosecutor there had difficulty reaching that burden of proof, and ultimately that led to an acquittal. Alvin Bragg does not want to see that happen in this case, thus the lesser charge of manslaughter. All right, Brian, so Daniel Penny has been charged, but this case still has to go to the grand jury. Can you just walk us through what we can expect to see happen here? Yeah, so Daniel Penny, charged by the district attorney's office. It's what's called a complaint. The next step is to whether or not this case gets presented to the grand jury. I think it's probably going to happen. The grand jury is a panel of 16 to 23 people, and all they're doing is deciding whether it's more likely than not that Daniel Penny committed this crime. If that does occur, then it's the process of discovery. That's the information they're going to use to prosecute Penny, given over to the defendant, information being exchanged, and then ultimately, I think this case is probably ripe for a trial. We would see a trial in maybe nine to 12 months, depending on how things progress. Ebony, how important is jury selection? I can't name one person in New York who hasn't been on a train and sort of experienced something of this nature where someone has bothered you or you're worried or concerned and you moved to another car. Listen, my hand's up in the air for that, DeMarco. I take the train every day. It's one of my favorite uh, aspects of living in New York. Unfortunately, I was the victim, actually, last summer of a sexual assault on the MTA. So I have deep empathy and compassion for um, how that can show up in New York daily life. And also, we have to make the space for the humanization of the mentally ill, of those among us who are unhoused. And that's the situation of Jordan Neely. He had been identified as one of the 50 most in need New Yorkers uh, that we can, can name. And so voir dire, DeMarco, is, is, is pivotal. That's what, you know, the legal jargon for jury selection. You've got to find someone, no, that is not unaware, but can say, I can hold the empathy for what it's like to be fearful on a train and also humanize uh, someone that has mental health concerns. Brian, what are the biggest challenges for the defense in this case? It's partly <laughs> picking the right jury, because it's not just the facts, but who you present it to as well. But it's the idea of self-defense. Now, self-defense is on a spectrum. It's as applied. So for the defense, the issue is while you're holding uh, Jordan Neely in a chokehold, and even after he passes out, is Penny still in fear or reasonable fear of deadly force? Not just ordinary force, but deadly force. I think that is going to be the biggest thing. A lot of people may excuse the initial chokehold, the initial grab to protect other people, but even the fact that he came up from behind Jordan Neely, how does he feel a danger of his life if he's coming up from behind and how is he saying that other people because he does have a duty or a right to protect other people how he's saying that they are in danger not just of harm but of death because he used deadly force i think that's going to be one of the biggest hurdles for the defense also we don't have stand your ground here in new york no, so he not. would have a duty to retreat if he was going to use deadly force to the fact that he, does he feel like he can safely retreat or the others around him Again, another hurdle in this case for the defense. And just a final question for you, uh, Ebony. In the New York Times, actually today, uh, the mayor, Eric Adams, is drawing criticism for his response or lack thereof yes. from Democrats mainly. Yeah. How do you think he should have responded to this case? Because a lot of people are looking at it and they're seeing race first. I hate the politics of this case already. You know, we're, we sit in the space of the, the legal lens, and unfortunately, this has gotten extremely political. You've got Eric Adams being questioned. You've got the mayor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, giving unsolicited commentary. Um, and, and I think that that gets in the way of the law. The race is a factor, though, DeMarco. Absolutely. The fact is that we are living not three full years from watching George Floyd murder in this same manner, also a chokehold. So we've got to look at the dehumanization of the mentally ill. And also, is this a level of criminali criminalizing rather blackness on its face? It has to be answered. All right, Deputy K. Williams and Brian Buckmeyer, my friends here. Good to see you guys. Thank you, guys. Always. Congratulations. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching.
and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.